Woo-wee! We're back, baby. I didn't like that at we all. We are back. We're going to have to adjust the volume on that one. Oh. We did a live stream last week, and now we are back recording the podcast. We've been releasing them every week, and if you I haven't... I punch you right now. Am that, I talking too much? No, that was just so... That was so loud. I have the We're ability. away from the house without kids, and you chose to do that. Babe, this is no, us. I'm you not and holding me your hand right now. Conversing. No. Shake my hand. I'm so mad. At least at you. Shake it like a like a <laughs> uh if you have not listened to some of the interviews we've been releasing, you should. Okay. We have released Anil and Anna, mm-hmm. two oh, astronauts. This was like a crowd favorite. I didn't know how it was gonna be received. They are amazing. It's hard to communicate how impressive these two are, but they're literally two of the around 40 active astronauts and they're married yeah so that's pretty amazing the chances of that happening wild yeah wild uh but we're back guys yes. let's put a little asterisk here my brain is still mush so i will try to form sentences that make sense for you but uh we are now a family of five <laughs> we had a kid and then another one, and another one. <laughs> um, and we are in the thick of it. I do, I feel like the past two or three days, I heard you say this on the phone today, I got a glimmer of like light at the end of the tunnel. It's been rocky roads. It has and been Maybe we'll roads. disclose more soon, but we're not there yet. <laughs> we're not that out of the woods. No. We did take a almost three-month paternity and maternity leave yep so thank you for allowing us to do that we did pre-record a lot of these episodes and it was such special time with the kids and also it was necessary it turned out that was very necessary for us to take that yeah it was yeah i don't know what is more extreme or like the next level of necessary but it was that yeah we needed that so even a level further (laughs) than needed that was very like there was no other option that was a very astute thing you did by setting us up like that. And thank you. Um, and, and now we're back. So we, we uh, back. if you've had kids, you might be able to empathize with this. There's like a brain fog that happens. You can't really <sighs> think about anything else. It, it's this weird fog, and you don't you're not thinking straight. Just like you could clearly tell by me speaking <laughs> weird. Uh, everything is weird. I see other people and I don't know how to socialize. It's almost like a pandemic vibe. I know. I do want to say this though. I know we are beyond blessed. We are beyond blessed to have been able to have taken a maternity leave, paternity leave this long. We are beyond blessed to have help, to have grandparents close to us, all these things. But I did read the statistic in the thick of maternity leave that probably sent me into a black hole tailspin of sadness because it said that the average American mother goes back to work five weeks postpartum and the average American baby gets put into daycare at Imagine. five weeks old. And that is just like so wrong on so many levels. And I don't know how to fix it. Uh, so I'll leave it at that. But it needs to be fixed. Sean, to her credit, has been brainstorming ways that we could maybe help make a dent in that problem oh yeah and so stay tuned i think there will be a big push that we do this year that we would love your help support and feedback on and we should have more information on that in around two or three weeks but i think doing what we're about to announce will set us up to hopefully maybe like support yeah moms and dads and families a little bit better anyway back to today's episode we posted on instagram and asked it Asked, uh, ask it. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> we asked it. We asked you all to send in questions that you had for us now that we're a family of five. Yeah. And we got a lot. We got quite a few mm-hmm. and many, many good ones. Also, I do want to say you guys have been the best, super supportive, excited for our family, been in this journey with us. So thank you. Thank you. I am researching right now for my PhD online communities and subcultures because <laughs> I've realized that there is the toxic side of the internet yeah. and you go on Twitter. That's kind of like a toxic platform. 
You go Reddit. on Reddit. It's like same vibe. But boy, we have this amazing group that for whatever reason <laughs> has been attracted to our content. Mm -hmm. And it's like this. I feel like this is how social media should be. So thank you for being a part of that. We are honored to also be a part of that. And uh, man, we have fun. So anyway, we haven't what? Nothing. I'm delusional, delirious. I just saw, um, we haven't seen these questions. Just so you guys know, we collected them from social media, from Instagram, and I just got a glimpse at the first one and I'm chuckling at like us trying to attempt these answers. Oh, geez, I'm nervous yeah. now. Uh, in full transparency, we are still trying to figure this out ourselves. So um, oh. don't view this as advice as much as war stories. All right. <laughs> Shall we jump into it? Yeah. Okay, these are from Sean's Instagram. So the first question <laughs> is, how would you compare the transition of zero to one, one to two, and then two to three kids, and what's the hardest transition? You see why I'm giggling? Um, it's a little bit all over the place. I still believe the very hardest transition, I don't want to speak for us, but I think for us, um, I'll speak for me, for me was zero to one. Zero to one was by far the most massive life change, identity change transition that I went through. I would say after that, I don't know. I still I still think even though we've had some really hard times with this baby just trying to figure out us and him and everything, I still think zero to one was the hardest. Then it was one to two, getting used to multiples. And then it was two to three. Hmm. What would you say? I agree zero to one was the hardest. There's just so many new things. And it really is the end of one chapter of your life and the beginning of another. Mm -hmm. And there's like a lot of things that come with that. Ramifications like schedule changes. And so that it's a massive shift. I heard someone, someone mm -hmm. describe two to three as being harder on the dad. Yeah. Is that what you're about to say? Yeah. Because now... Usually the day looks like me spending time with yep. our two older kids and Sean's with the baby. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's like. It's it's a bigger shift for you than just having like a second kid. But by the way, we're having a blast. Yeah. I'm having so much fun with those kids. I think <laughs> it, the way you word it might be misinterpreted. It's not like harder on the dad than like the mom giving birth and stuff. It's just yeah. like, it's a harder it's a large transition for a father when you go to three because it's no longer like I've got one, you've got one. It's like, dad, you have to take two for the first three months while I'm figuring out an infant. Yeah. And yeah, it's been a huge transition for you, but you've been amazing. But I'm curious for your guys' feedback too. If you're commenting <laughs> on YouTube, what your experience has been, I want to do like a poll formally for, for people to have yeah. three kids and ask them this because some people say two to three wrecks their life which maybe was our, <laughs> close to our experience <laughs> and some people say two to three is nothing which has definitely not been our experience so i want to fill this drama we're alluding to we'll definitely talk about it more and more but something that andrew and i have noticed with kids is like with each transition <laughs> zero to one one to two two to three there is this phase of of transition where you kind of lose husband and wife for a while because you're mom and dad and you're in this big transition and transitions are hard. So we're just still trying to figure out the transition of husband and wife again and get our groove back. But we're getting there. I will say for men listening, I think I've come to the realization that Sean, 95% of her mental bandwidth, I think, is consumed with the baby. Yes. And so it's like that just is something to be aware of. Take it for what it's worth. Second question. How do you fit in workouts with three kids? It feels like I'll never have time again. Mm. I think we'll do a day in the life with three yeah. kids on our main YouTube channel. Um, how have you fitted in? I, <clears throat> again, this is a luxury because I know our lifestyle is different. Since I have been staying home, been doing more of like the stay at home mom situation. I find time when the baby is napping and 
you're able to take the bigs or something. So it's usually during a nap time or I've done workouts with him before strapped to me. But usually in the morning during like a lull or while the bigs are napping. By the way, you'll start hearing our verbiage that we've <laughs> adopted. Drew and Jet, the four and two year old, are our, we call them the bigs. And then Bear, our babe, the baby is. Ba- They're baby. kind of separate by dependency. Drew and Jet <laughs> are still dependent, but in a much different way than. Have you noticed that when we go to bed? Yeah. It's like, who's got the big? <clears throat> yeah, we haven't talked about that. That's funny. Uh, I, I'm actually curious to do this breakdown. So the, our kids go to like mommy and me classes for three days a week. Mm-hmm. And so that's maybe 18 hours per week that we have with the bigs out of the house. And then of that 18 hours, Bear sleeps for maybe six of the hours in those windows. So you probably have a six hour window yeah. for you to, to do that. Yeah. Otherwise you're like breastfeeding. And then the weekends. You usually do the early morning though. I usually do early morning. It does get a little dicey because the kids' sleep schedule is fluctuating. So, mm-hmm. like, you don't want to start a workout and then stop it. So, I've, I mean, we've worked out less for sure. It's not the yeah. priority. There's phases for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw on Instagram somewhere, it was like the whole like eras. I'm in my whatever era. It was like I'm in my new mom era or new dad era where it's like I'm not going to be the most fit. I'm not going to be the most regimented. I'm not going to be yeah. the most social, but that's okay. I really feel that way. Um, I think you will have time again for yeah. whoever wrote that question. It might just be like, by the time our kids get to Drew's age, like three or four, mm-hmm. you have time. You know, They'll do activities and then... Mm, we won't get I this know. time back. I don't want that. Uh, number three, were we shocked by the gender of Bear? Did we secretly have a preference? I was shocked. I could not believe it. I thought... This was a baby girl through and through. I thought I saw a sneak peek of the nursery, and I thought I saw pink. So I literally had to triple check when they pulled the baby out. And I it was took like, you a while. I was like, "Is that the umbilical? What is, is that the umbilical cord?" Or no way, it's a boy. And now I cannot imagine it any other way. I know I couldn't either. I had a mom feeling that it was a boy, but I don't know if I could tell. I think my mind just went to a boy um i didn't secretly have a preference i was more scared of having a second girl than i was of having a boy and that's just because drew is my first i have a harder time dealing with emotion versus physicality just everything girls scare me (laughs) as far as middle school high school drama emotions heartache yeah which i'll still deal with a my boys too, but yeah. Just feel a little different. It's almost like, uh, yeah. I, this is, if I was going to draw up our family before we started having kids, mm-hmm. this is exactly what I wanted. It's amazing. It's amazing how it panned out. I'm really thankful. Four, are the older kids jealous of Bear? And if so, how do you handle that? We, this is something we've been really conscious of, mm-hmm. to Sean's credit. Um, I think initially there was some, I guess, curiosity about how things would pan out. Mm -hmm. And Drew had some moments where she would like really want our attention. But really, I think we've done a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. Sean will sit there and breastfeed and be giving the kids attention. And that's really difficult to do, to be honest. I almost lose my mind every morning. It's (laughs) it's, (laughs) Uh, There's this like... I don't know why it's the routine. It's adorable and it's so sweet. So to back up for a second, our kids adore Bear. They have way far exceeded our our mm-hmm. expectations in loving him and wanting to be a part of being siblings and everything. They are so good with him. There is a little bit of jealousy, but I wouldn't say it's been bad at all. Um, but every morning at 7 a.m. when Bear wakes up and the kids wake up, I sit on the couch and try to nurse Bear and I have Drew on one side, like literally almost cheek to cheek and Jet on the other side, almost cheek to cheek. And they're just like at the top of their lungs, like, oh, good morning, Bear. Oh my gosh. And they're like touching his face and like pulling on me and like, and it's so sweet, but it is so overstimulating and claustrophobic that I 
want to jump out of my skin. Yeah. But it's so sweet. There have been a lot of temptations for us to say no to the big kids a lot. Yeah. And it's it's hard to not do that when they're like all over the baby. But instead of saying no, we've been trying to like ask them to do something mm-hmm. and involve them in helping. So, hey, Drew, you know, when she's all over him, can you go get brother a pacifier? Or can you go get mm-hmm. his milk or a blanket or whatever? And then they feel like they're a part of the whole yeah. thing. So um, they've been great, to be honest. We also... One other little thing that I think was one of the greatest pieces of advice that I was given by our pediatrician when we had Jet, so when we had our second, was whenever you have a kid, change the possession to, how do I word that? To like your your children. So instead of saying, mommy's having a baby, I need to feed my baby, the baby, whatever, everything belongs to your children. So mommy's having your brother i'm gonna go pick up your brother from the hospital your brother is so excited to to meet you like making it their possession puts it less on like something to be jealous about because it's theirs not mine that's good yeah if that makes sense what's been the biggest adjustment you didn't expect what what you're smiling for (laughs) Again, we'll talk about this when we figured it out, but we've already had two kids. We've noticed that it puts a strain on us, just like readjustments. I thought we would kind of have had it figured out. Isn't it so humbling? It's like, dude, we've done this. We've had a kid before, but we've not had this kid before. We haven't. (laughs) So I, I think the biggest adjustment for me is our other two kids. I think... If if there were any issues, it was sleep related. Drew was bottle fed, and that was kind of a unique challenge. But this one, yeah, Bear has slept like a champ, really yeah. since the beginning. But he hasn't really been eating when he's up, so he's like the the awake time is not as fun and tender as I remember it being, because there's just been like, hey, we got to make sure this gets eating. So it's been precious. Well, also give you more of like his whole story and journey but he was our first like colicky baby which we did not expect um went through a bunch of things just trying to figure out what his little things were that we needed to work on he had a tongue and lip tie um that we ended up getting released which really helped if not fixed the problem um but it was it was six really long weeks of trying to figure out why our little guy was so unhappy all yep. the time. That was a big adjustment. Oh, that was really hard. All right. How do you equally divide your attention and love between the three kids mm. and each other? I don't think we've done a great job at dividing attention between each other. What about you? Between you and I? Yeah. With the kids? We've still done date night, but it's like so much of your attention is going to the kids. Uh, I read that completely. <laughs> I think between each other, like if we have 100% attention... Yeah. How do we divide it between me to you and me to the three kids? Really, it's been me with the two big kids. Yeah. Uh, for me mo- with the baby. Yeah. And then we do date nights, which honestly, I, again, can't imagine the past three months if we didn't do date nights. No. How much w- farther apart we would be. Yeah, that'd be yeah. tough. Um, We haven't really figured this out. We don't equally divide it yet. And I think that's... Not because we don't want to. It's just because we're still in a transition phase of trying to figure it out. Um, In full transparency, I'm not spending enough time with you. I'm also not spending enough time with with the bigs. Like, I miss my big kids desperately. But this phase of life, this transition phase, demands more, a lot more one-on-one time with me and Bear than it does with me and the bigs, and vice versa. I've seen that, you haven't been able to spend as much time with Bear and it's hard, especially given all the stuff we've had to figure out with him. Um, You haven't spent as much time with me, but you get a lot of time with the bigs. So it's like... That's what I mean when when Bear's awake time isn't as fun. It's because I actually like... Yeah. It's usually he's up and he's trying to figure out eating. Mm -hmm. And so it's not up, he's up and I get to play with him, Mm -hmm. you know? That's been tough. I mm-hmm. want to spend time with them. I, know, I think I've babies. I freaking love babies. I know. 
dare I also include in this that we haven't figured out how you can just spend time with you and divide your attention. (laughs) I think that's really critically important. I don't know when the shift occurs from being super baby focused to like, you know, people talk about the effect of when your kids are old and out of the house, you don't Mm -hmm. know who you are anymore as Mm -hmm. a parent. The, The way to prevent that is slowly from the beginning making sure that you are investing in friends and vice versa, friends investing in you. So I want you to know that I'm here to support you in that. If you want to put anything on the schedule, <laughs> any trips on the schedule, I know, baby. I'll make it happen. I know that. And I know you support me so much in that area. And I know we've talked about this before. And I, I keep telling you, Andrew, that I just don't feel ready for that. But I want it. I really want it. I want my time to me to like (laughs) regain my sanity but there's this weird thing that I'm currently dealing with which is bear still needs me a lot and we're still trying to figure out breastfeeding and his colic and like latching and all these things but we're just now starting to get him into a schedule into the groove and he's progressing and doing so well and sleeping well so now that's freeing up some time I'm seeing glimpses of these ta- this time, which is amazing. But because I so desperately miss the bigs yeah, and I haven't been able to spend time with them, that free time now, I just want to spend with them. So this will almost get harder to, le- to know it how does. to divide your attention. But then that little time will free up and it's like, oh, now I want to spend time with my husband. So it's like you keep going down that. You and I, which is daunting because, like, I'm like, maybe I don't get me back for a while, (laughs) but I also need it. You and I thrive when we're away for even a half hour. We do. You're like, hey, I found this new song and I went on a drive, or I found this new park, you know, even a half hour. And it's not about like self love, self care, and the glorification of that. I think that's probably part of it but it's more it's such a unique challenge as a parent especially with a newborn you have such small fragmented windows randomly dispersed throughout the day where it's like okay the baby's down for a nap for 10 15 minutes what i want to do and then you just build this habit of like going on your phone Mm -hmm. and that's really most of our videos we talk about trying to meet parents Mm -hmm. in that phase of like hey let's bring a smile or a thought to your day while you're in these random moments of of respite Mm -hmm. but there needs to be a slow progression away from refreshing your instagram feed to recharging your soul Mm -hmm. anyway um we'll get there we'll get there number seven (laughs) what would bear's name have been if he was a girl do you want to share that are are we gonna have any more kids i don't think we are baby you want to share it yeah why not all right, we. <laughs> I can't believe we're sharing this, but the name that we, we were gonna have for still girl, use it. I think is so epic, and I'm unexpected. so excited to share it. Unexpected. Yeah. We both lit up though when we heard this we name. We did. And you go ahead, share it. If we were gonna have a little girl, her name was gonna be Goldie Jean East. G O L D I E G E N E East. Yeah, Goldie Jean. Yeah. Yeah. My uh, dad's middle name is Eugene and his, yeah, it's been a long family name. If you haven't listened to our episode on how to name a baby, please go do that. Um, She didn't guess that one. She did not guess that one, but I think she was close. I think she was close. Uh, But we definitely are embracing the full millennial (laughs) odd name vibe. Yeah. Uh, any particular reason we didn't opt for a minivan? Yeah, what the heck, Sean? I refuse to drive one. I'm sorry. That is just on me. It's is it an not, identity thing for you? It's an identity thing, and I'm. it's fine. Why Why don't we make a minivan that's, like, really attractive to drive? Is that the, called an SUV. No, it's not. It's, it's totally different thing. Sliding doors. Wait, it's my like new so dream functional. car, guys, I'm trying to convince Andrew to let me get one and trade in our, our Yukon already. Is the new Lexus GX, um, but like the off-roading one? It's so pretty. Great. Cool. Okay. <laughs> um, number nine, growing your family. 
Do you find it harder to keep relationships with friends who don't have kids? Hundred yes. <laughs> percent. You don't get it, dude. It, it, no. <laughs> A hundred percent. Can I, let's try to just un, unpack oh this a little bit. Gosh. The um, one, we talk about how p- parenting with some of our friends has like separated us from even when they have kids because mm-hmm. the style differences really get amplified. Oh, you're really into like organic food. Well, we're just somewhat into organic food. And so you just naturally spend less time because like you don't want to go to the same restaurants. You don't want to go over and cook. That's like a weird thing. And that yeah. organic food is like not, not even the tip of the iceberg yeah. that, that expands into whatever cloth diapers and what schools you go to and Sleep what shows training. you make. Them. Yeah. It's just, yeah, your ten, your styles kind of separate you. Because this yeah. is how the conversation goes. It's like, are you sleep training your kid? No, I heard that there's a study that, that made, uh, that makes kids whatever, whatever. Le- and worse then off. Both and parties it, feel isolated awkward, yeah. and then you're like we're not going to refresh this Re- <laughs> we're not going to renew this <laughs> friendship so that's one thing but then i think as a parent i have doubled down on like i don't know you take in some ways life more seriously yeah and also the scheduling just oh gets hard gosh. so like i'll get invited hey you want to by one of my buddies doesn't have kids he's like you want to come hang at five i'm like in no world <laughs> Will I ever be able to hang out? I can hang out before 7 a.m. on a good day. Or after 7 p.m. Or after 7 p.m. And that's it. And we go to bed at no joke. Or if there's like an exception to an event or like a guy's night or whatever that's like on the schedule. But like on a whim, that's very difficult. And we go to bed at 8.15. So it's like the windows of time is just so small. But people who don't have kids, it's hard to understand. You just like... uh, Yeah, it's like it's, it's both philosophical differences time differences and there's also like style differences too of i remember one of my friends when she started having kids and stuff i'd be like i would get offended because she wouldn't text back it'd be hard to get a hold of her she would never come over to game nights and then you have kids i'm like oh i totally get it like i'm not answering your call if it's your call or my kids it's gonna be my kid like it's just you're like more hectic around the house, but then you're also like, I don't want to be on my phone or I don't yeah. want to like, I don't want to be, you don't want to be away from the kids, yeah. you know, like you want to spend time. It's such a precious phase. Yeah. So yes, we have, <laughs> we have uh, spent less time with them. Um, How are we keeping the memory of dad alive with our kids? Oh, I think we're doing a great job. I'm really thankful. Well, Drew has a phenomenal memory. Yeah. There's been a couple of things that she's brought up from like a year ago. So when she was three and a half that she still remembers and talks about we also have a, a drawing that sean had commissioned um by richard bowers that is an apple tree which like was the center of our household with bees and that's all things from my experience with my dad and so she'll drew a look at that and ask about papa and hey you remember when we used to pick apples with him we talk about him often and that's that's kind of what i mean by taking life more seriously yeah. it's like um you realize that that this is a legacy and and, mm-hmm. and that affects your day to day in little ways. So it's like, I want to be more intentional with what I'm speaking to my kids about. We'll talk about pop on the way to school. And it just built in mm-hmm. that sense. I don't know if that made sense, but mm-hmm. I'm really thankful for Sean's support and her active role in uh, making sure that Papa is remembered by our kids. How do you keep the newborn healthy and away from all the toddler germs? Oh my God. This was, we haven't talked about this, one of my frustrations with you. Because also appreciation. This is a style difference that you and I have. Is the kids would be all up in the baby's face. And Sean, a couple dozen times a day, no, 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 no. And you would get frustrated. Then I'm like, yo, you know what? Who cares? And that's also not right. But there's some sweet spot in between. I'm optimistic. Should I stop talking? No, it's just style differences. (laughs) It's the difference of being a postpartum mom versus a postpartum dad. And it's just different. Do you forgive me? I do. It's okay. I don't go to the ends of the earth where it's like take my toddlers out of school, quarantine them for... um, a few weeks before the baby arrives, which is very, very common, which I, which is totally fine. Um, 
I we don't really keep the toddlers away from the baby. Yes, they're all up in their face. At the end of the day, the first weeks are hard because you're so protective and you're so scared. And the yeah. pediatrician has told you there's so many things yeah, that they yeah. can get and it's scary and all these things. Um, but I just tried to tell myself, like, I'm breastfeeding him, which is one of the best things I personally in my journey can do for him. And as long as our kids aren't spiking a massive fever and super sick, I'll try to like bite my tongue and be okay with it and just teach them, let's kiss his feet, let's kiss his belly, let's kiss the top of his head. Let's just not try to lick his face. <laughs> yeah. But practically we have like the little stoky uh holder that we put the baby. We we do try to elevate the kid as much as possible. And that's maybe the only practical thing we do other than telling the kids give him space. It was also hard cuz like a week or two after he was born, we did Christmas with extended family, oh, geez, yeah. 10 kids under the age of 10 or under the age of 6 who were they were all sick. They all had like the flu and everything. And Yo, December babies are hard. Bruh. December babies are tough. It's cold. You don't go outside. You don't really get the sunlight. Everyone's which is sick. Tough. It was yeah. It was stressful, but we're uh, making it through, guys. Okay. What is the, or sorry, is there anything you were really nervous about being a family of five that actually hasn't been that bad? I don't know if I was nervous. I was really pumped yeah. for the third kid, and I think it's. No, I, I think I kind of fight wanting Bear to already be older because I'm having yeah. so much fun yeah. with the four and two year old. I get that. So much fun. So it's like I want him to be a part of that. I feel that too. I already feel like he's missing out, yeah. and I feel like like we're missing out on like the play time with all of us already because. Yeah. He's still an infant and I can't like jump in the pool with him right yet or, you know, whatever. Um, but no, nothing I was really nervous about. I could see how having twins would be really difficult. Bruh. Yeah, that would be tough. That would be <laughs> tough. Yeah. Because people talk about that, you know, the, your nurse for the transition two to three and you lose man to man coverage. I haven't really felt that. No. Like, but if you had two young babies that aren't as fun to play with as our four and two-year-old, that would be tough. Yeah. What's the most rewarding thing about being a parent? I talk about this all the time. The interesting thing about communicating <laughs> this as a parent is that the tough things in parenting are really tangible, easy to grasp yeah. things. Hey, you're not sleeping as much. Oh, you can't go out because you got to put the baby down to sleep. Oh, you need to get babysitter. All these things, it's, it's a financial cost. But the benefits of it, are a mm. little more untangible. But I think just like everything else in life, the best things come slowly over time. And so it's like, oh, whatever. It's it's exponentially more rewarding than these things I'm about to mention, but fitness goals, <laughs> it doesn't happen overnight. But you, you, you look back five years down the road and you're like, wow, I'm actually pretty fit. Or financially, it's like, it's not. It doesn't feel that rewarding to slowly contribute month to month to your investment account, but fast forward five years and it's like incredibly rewarding. As a parent, it's like, dude, you're building, you're stacking these days and these memories and then you see Drew now learns how to draw this and she had no, con she knows how to draw her name now. I know. That seems like such an obvious small thing for those I people know. listening, but as a parent, when you know that she didn't even know how to hold a pencil two years ago, yeah. you're like, what the frick? That yeah. blows your mind. Anyway, I'm oh, done. Are you gonna start crying? I'm just hyped. Seeing these little tiny humans become people and have character and quirks to them and personalities and preferences mm -hmm. and opinions and seeing them learn and develop and grow is so cool. It's just so cool. And equally coupled with that is to see your partner step mm -hmm. up and again, kind of take life in this more serious tone. It's, it's really meaningful. That's the word that comes to mind. How do you keep the older kids quiet when the newborn has to nap? Or does the third baby just get used to the noise? 
He sleeps better when they're screaming. Yeah, dude, no joke. That, if it's silent, he doesn't sleep. He's just used to it. Yeah. I don't know if it's like in the third baby's genes or if they're used to it because they've been conditioned to it. If you're trying to keep toddlers quiet so a baby can sleep, that baby ain't never going to sleep. I, we're about to post a short that I just <laughs> find so humorous. When we had Drew, our first kid, <laughs> it was like you had to have the sound machine on. It had yeah. to be dark. We had the blankets and everything. We had all these like portable things to make sure the conditions were perfect and now it's like it's chaos and and bears asleep yeah logistically how do you do bath time and bedtime with three kids i think this might have been what i was most nervous about because i was Mm -hmm. afraid of losing that quality time with our bigs putting them down um the schedule is kind of just worked out i don't know how no it's taken the first seven weeks we're not like this but now now we're in this really fun we're in a really fun phase right now at 12 weeks where the bigs will do bath time, bedtime with them together, like all of us together around seven o'clock. As soon as we get them put down, um, then we'll take Bear into his room. We'll do his bath time and his bedtime routine and put him to sleep, which is really fun. Yeah, so we get we get Bear time, which is really nice because mm-hmm. we realize – He's your third kid, probably our last kid. Mm-hmm. We haven't got a lot of solo time with him as a baby. Yeah, we and we've only done a bath with all three of them one time. It gets a little chaotic, yeah. a little stressful. We're not there so, yet. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, and one of us usually holds the baby while the other per- person puts PJs and diapers and all the things on, and then we'll divide and conquer from yeah. there for bedtime. But How it's do- usually someone has the baby, and the other person's like taking care of the bigs or we're all like passing the baby off back and forth and i will say pro tip for uh bath time try to do all the you know you could read books to them while they're in the bath you could brush their teeth Mm -hmm. while they're in the back try to batch it all (laughs) yeah and at least our boy is sprinting back and forth (laughs) until he's in the bed literally every night so when he's in the bath it's kind of easier to just knock all that stuff out how do you integrate faith into your everyday life for the little ones Prayers when we wake up, prayers when we go to bed, prayers before meals, uh, Sunday school. We do Bible stories before bed. Sunday morning before church, we'll watch Veggie Tales or Minnow. Um, and then I would say more so with Drew because of her age. Nightmares and stuff have started to become a thing. Fears. She talked about a, a nightmare the other night about monsters or volcanoes and lava was a fear at one point and so integrating faith and god courage you know all of this stuff into those conversations before bedtime like god's got you he's surrounding you he's protecting you and it sparks a lot of conversation minnow really has been integral in that if you haven't checked him out it's a kids christian screaming streaming service and uh it just makes you realize that the bible really has some good values to teach whether you're into religion or not and it's like a great entry point with stories involved and everything but yeah we just start every each day with this is the day lord has made let's rejoice and be glad in it that's our prayer um and then we end each day with the lord's prayer mm-hmm. we do quick which the ki- both the kids can say start to finish yeah which is wild so it's not like it doesn't overwhelm the day we don't overdo yeah. it but I, I think it's integral to use the Little word habit. from the question yeah do you always recommend living by family when mm-hmm. you have kids? And what would you do if Sean's parents didn't live by? How I would answer this question is, do I always recommend living close to family? Before kids, I was going to say, like, I don't think it matters. After kids, yes. Yeah, I agree. And if my parents didn't live by, I think we would live in Indy. Yeah, you have a whole new perspective. Mm-hmm. Um Again, okay, so we talked about the stylistic differences, and then you realize that, okay, the style that I'm drawn to is because of the family I grew up in. Yeah. And so naturally the conversations I want to have and, like, the, the feedback I get is easier and and more efficient with the family I came from. And then, yeah, I mean, having intergenerational families live mm-hmm. in, a, in a close proximity is, is game-changing. Mm-hmm. And it seems like everyone kind of ultimately ends up there at some point. Yeah. Where it's, oh, hey, we're moving back to be by my parents. It's great. Mm -hmm. Time is short. All right, we got three more. Yeah. Are your kids in a mommy or daddy phase right now? And does this change often? 
It does change often. It does change. I think every six months. Yeah. And it also is like, it depends on the scenario. So like, we're in a constant mommy is comfort, daddy is play. That's just kind of like yeah. how it is. But I would say the bigs are in a daddy phase, which makes sense because I'm not there for them right now. Um, is it hard? Yeah. I think it's hard on both sides of us. Yeah, but sometimes it's refreshing to, to realize yeah. like, hey, they need me, but they don't need me that much. Yeah. And like they're fine with mom. Yeah. And I have this self versa. I have this selfish thing as a parent that I want them to just be dependent on me and <laughs> and like that's not necessarily true. Yeah. Um as a mom, how do I deal with oh, the overwhelming mental load of having three kids? I feel like you know that Instagram gif gif of like Albert Einstein where all those like <laughs> Graphics. Graphics, equations. algebraic expressions, equations are like roaming. That's like my head at all times. I'm like, did I forget something about school? Are they in all the activities they should be in? Has Bear eaten recently? Did he get, it's just all always there. How do I deal with it? Um, I'm still trying to figure it out. I try to write it down. I try to put calendars to get, together, schedules together. So that more and more people can help my mental load. It's really interesting how you answered that question. And it's logistically. That was actually really helpful for me to listen to. Because there could be the emotional mental load too. That's a part of it. I think to describe my brain. You know how if I get overwhelmed or angry or something, I clean. Yeah. It's like. It's that like being able to like organize my life allows for a lot of my mental load to like disappear. Why are you just not telling me this now that we're... Shouldn't you just figure it out? (laughs) That's hilarious. Thank you so much. So like in my mental load, all the overwhelming stuff, if I can write it down and have someone else help me be like, remember, you have to drop off Valentine's gifts today or Valentine's goodies or the box. It's like that really helps logistically figuring things out makes me feel under control you should have to- told me that eight years ago thank you uh number 20 last one You're this welcome. is gonna be the last one we answer today maybe we do a part two yeah does that work yeah okay what does our support system of close friends and family look like i will say we're spending less time with friends now yeah. i think there's naturally that's a yeah. phase we have a lot that needs to be taken care of in our home transitions to figure out new rhythms to find uh, we see Sean's parents five days a week. Yep. Or more. <laughs> and then we try to sneak in like a weekend brunch. Uh, that's important to us. We did a meal train. If you're having a baby, I would recommend that. That was actually, right. that far exceeded my expectations and was way more enjoyable and meaningful than I expected it to be. To mm-hmm. see friends often as as long or as short as you want them to and to like give them a way to invest in you Mm -hmm. was really fun. And like, you know, it pulls you out of the fog a little bit. I would say too, we started this probably a few months before we had bear, but every Friday night we do pizza and a movie. And that's kind of like still our open door policy where we try to, we have consistent friends who come over with their kids for pizza and movie night. Um, who just had a kid, who just had a kid as well. So we, yeah, (laughs) like a week ago. Um, but we try at least one night or day a week to do like community building with our close friends. But yeah, we're in that weird transition phase of getting into, back into our groove. Church is really helpful, to be yeah. honest. The, 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 one of the large motivations for us to go back to church was the <laughs> child care there. And then, and then we go and talk with adults for whatever, even just 10 minutes, and that makes a big difference. So uh, it's a phase. Yeah. It's a phase. Okay, I feel like that's a good number. Let's do yeah. part two. Okay. Thank you all for listening. Uh, I love doing these, actually. it's. I mean, I learn about you so much when we do these episodes. I learn about you too, baby. I think we're going to focus a lot more on just Sean and I episodes in 2024. That's been the feedback that we have received. And also, they're pretty enjoyable um, for me to do for that reason. They're enjoyable for me too. So if you have any other questions, send them in. We'll post on Instagram, so check that. Uh, please... we're taking any and all advice okay 
put those in the YouTube comments if you're over there. Help us out. And uh, just know that we do love hearing from you guys. That's We don't just do this for a one-sided conversation. So chime in, chip in. We love it. And let us know what episodes you want to see. So that's all we got. I'm Andrew. I'm Sean. We're the East Fam. 